if you guys didn't know, I also got coaching from John. If you really do want to like learn the deck, definitely book. I'm not ashamed to. A lot of other good players aren't ashamed to. This man knows a lot about what he's doing. Don't be afraid to. You're going to become a much better player at Yu-Gi-Oh! in general after it. Hello, friends, infernal friends. How are you? And this time, as you can see, I am not in the big screen. We have Phantasme, Uppercutter, Charles. What's going on? That's right, a deck profile. <laughs> <laughs> but not any deck profile, as you already uh, can see probably in the title of the video. We are here to talk about a successful Infernoble player uh, that actually happened to finish, I think, top eight in a big regional. And mm -hmm. I'm not talking about me, because I might be a good Infernoble player, but I'm not the only one. Here we have another Infernoble, um, Infernoble guy. It should be like Infernoble Scarlet or Infernoble Rudy. Have you thought about changing your name, man? Uh, good, welcome to the channel. Anything you want to say to the viewers? Uh, hey, guys. Um... I'm glad to be here. Uh, just yeah, it was a 350 person regional. Um, I actually got seventh place, which is very nice at a nine round regional. So um, I'm just very happy that the deck is still more than playable. And I'm just gonna play these cards until I have to replace them, or until hopefully I can get a band or something like that. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the goal <laughs> to ban the cards. <laughs> I mean, oh, I mean, hopefully not. But if it happens, it's like an, an accomplishment, I guess. Like a badge of honor. If you can look at the balance, and be like, ah, oh, I kind of did that. <laughs> yeah, true, true. Um, okay, so here we have, uh, like, as you said, a top eight uh, deck list that I think it has a solid arguments of why allowed you to success. Of course, one important thing is the mm -hmm. pilot. So in case you don't know, he's a nice and excellent pilot because this is not the first original top that he has. Um, so if you want to test this deck, please, he rehearsed a lot before you try to go to original and try to make the same accomplishments because mm. you need practice to, to manage a deck like this. Uh, do you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. No, that, I 100% agree. Uh, okay. This is actually the fourth uh, regional that I've been able to type it with this deck alone. So I have a bunch, a bunch of experience, and even I can still make um, make mistakes while playing. So it's it's nobody's above making mistakes. So it's just practice, 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 and you will definitely see success with a deck like this. Yeah, yeah. I can promise you that if you make zero misplays, your chance of winning are like higher. It, it will be like you're playing, I don't know, at, at the tier one decks. Um, okay, so yeah. maybe we can start now with the uh, the main deck because we see upper card, and I know that just that lonely card could be like a hot topic for me to talk about. Uh, so maybe we start yep. with that guy, just because he's right in front of the screen. Absolutely. All right, so um, within, like, there are a few different engines you can start out with, which is, like, you can play the Flame Swordsman. Um, some people are playing the Snake Eyes. Some people are playing Adventure. Some people are playing just Pure with, like, 3 OG Air. Um, personally, for me, I think that the Uppercutter with Spar is the best direction for me to go. Um, I really like the potency of this of the normal summon, and I really like it because you are having a Fire Warrior starter. You're having a Fire Warrior extender that also searches a Fire Warrior in the combo line that it does. Since, if you don't know, you normal summon upper cutter, you add Sparrer, you make Dempsey, and Dempsey is going to add Renaud to add back Sparrer. And then um, this leads it so that Durendal, in any cases where you're hand-trapped, where people are just throwing the hand-trap at the first cards you're playing, Durendal and Museum and Heritage can can salvage any single line, which gives you the most possible ways to extend uh, versus like almost any other engine other than like the Infernal themselves. While this is all, also a one card engine that could do everything sufficiently. Um, I think that's almost invaluable personally because I like the fact that three Heritage, three Museum, the two Durendals, and even the Joy Probably. can extend me almost through everything. So. Mm -hmm. When you say one card, one card is enough, we are talking about that the only upper card is ending on like how much? Three, four, five uh, options? Six. Yeah. Six. Yeah. Um, um, if you open the one uppercutter alone, if you get very greedy and like my opponent doesn't have a hand trap because they haven't stopped me by now, you could end on double Charles, SP, Princess and Graveyard, and Gear Free Downfield. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think that's like one of the FTK boards because what would they do to, to break it? Like, it, unless they are crazy enough to make the like, Dark Ruler, they are going to have a big trouble. Um, and yeah, as, exactly. As I know, um, I think in this um, in games two or three, it's super easy to adapt the combo to get the angel ring, right? 
I'm sorry, one more time? Uh, in games 2 and 3, it's super easy to adapt the combo, so we end on also the angel ring. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, um, in the side deck, we play the small yeah. Roland, and as well as there are combo lines where you can just make Roland itself, because you say you open the museum and you don't need the extra Angelica to grab the museum. You can just make the Roland, because you have so many extra bodies that like the simple spoil cards allow you to produce. Um, so you can just send it off of Roland that a card, or use the small Roland where you send him or summon it off of simple spoils, and then it still works. So you get ring pretty much most of the time you go first in post side games. So yeah, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to make clear the point of the one card combo could be enough. Um, and of course, if you win <laughs> the one card combo, that means that your other four could be like non engine. So it's actually gonna be like super FTK. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> If you open the board and you have like one extender, three hand traps, and you can maybe play through two hand traps if they sequence it poorly. And then you also have three hand traps to fight back on top of your board. So um, that's, that's why I really like this engine. Because one um, one extender can full extend you and you can just go through it normally. Also, I think it's really important to, to note uh, the game state. I mean, the state of the game that we are in. Because I don't know if you're going to watch this in months from now, but right now in this current format, I think we agree that the the format is just shotgunning hand drops and right and left, and that's super good for this variant of the deck, right? Yes, if people are leading hand traps because right now it's like very very good to just people are throwing hand traps at like the first things you're playing because you have that's why the play that's why you play up against Snake Eye is you see Snake Eye Ash, you impermit, you see Bonfire, you Ash it, you see Black Witch, you impermit. Uh, people are treating most decks the same way. And if they, they do that to this deck, this deck, it's one card, one extender, full combo through any hand trap. So if this gets Ash Blossomed, any way into Durendal, any Black Witch, any just opening this, right? Yeah. Uh, it's full extension, and then you use their Ash Blossom. If they imprim your Black Witch, and they Ash this, and you have a museum, that is still seven interruptions. Um, <laughs> that's, that's crazy. And that's like, you can easily trade yeah, one card for one hand trap, and you're easily making the FTK board through that. So, yeah, um, it, it's very, very efficient at doing that. Okay, um, so one other thing, I think the controversial part about the Batwing Boxer is not on the upper cutter, it's actually in the spotter. So, in case you don't mm -hmm. know, that guy says, look me infinite times if you can, but if I get special summon, you don't have a battle trace. So, of course, yeah, at first glance, that yep. could be like, the, the, um, that could demotivate people but I think there are ways to work around it. So what do you have to say about that? Yeah. Um, so the um, that the spar is very unfortunate, but I don't. It's like one of the things about how you approach playing going second with this deck. I mean, sometimes you have to like normal summon bot them upper counter special add spar special summon and like pray that you can like do your stuff. But a lot of times you're actually just not just normal summoning and trying to go through a board that way you're trying to like work through a board and then use your battle phase as like a resource to uh, clear out bodies because this deck's in a unique position where all of its boss monsters remove a card um and then you also end on hard negates after removing those cards you can use your battle phase as a resource for just picking off one to two cards or baiting out one to two interruptions to then you can Build your board, SP Banish, Charles Pop, Baron Pop, or make, even if you had Gear Freed, right? Gear Freed, take a card. Um, and then on the negate board, and you're likely to just play through their follow up and then kill them the next turn. Um, so it is a downside, uh, without a doubt, but there are plenty of ways to play the deck, to pilot the deck, and to build it to mitigate that weakness. Um, I have Fenrir in my deck, which helps mitigate the weakness because you can special summon Fenrir, go battle phase and try and battle, banish something while battling something. Um, a lot of times that itself can bait out some interactions, and then you do it anyways. Um, but yeah, there's many ways to do it. Um, it's a downside. It's not a good thing to have on the card. But if you play it correctly, it's not going to it's not going to come up as much. Um, unless your opponent's extremely skilled and knows exactly what to do, um, it could hurt you. But at the same time, uh, very rarely you're going to run into somebody like that. So um, overall, I think it's it's fine. Um, I think it could be a good thing if they like actually interrupt your your upper card going second, so you don't like they waste an interruption mm -hmm. and you don't get the search, so you don't lose the battle phase. I don't know if that happened to you. Yeah. Yeah, like they could. Um, be, oh, actually, a lot of times. Yes. Yeah. 
And a lot of times, if you open these together, you can, funny enough, just, like, dis discard this and then have this get destroyed by card effect and then this bring this back. Because it's only one special summon by its effect. Um, it, it, it it stops you. So um, you could also use Uppercut or Secret Effect to revive this if you open both of them in, like, an OG air. Um, it's really funny. Because if you open this plus, like, OG air, you could discard this for Oliver and Normal Summon OG air, send this to have another extender. So <laughs> there's things you can do with the line that's really funny. Yeah, yeah. Also, if you, if you actually have to commit the no battle phase, we not only have the pubs, but one thing that I like about the deck is that our interruptions are huge. It's not like, oh, they can bait mm -hmm. everything with battle phase because we are going to have like more than 3,000 attack monsters. So uh, I think that's cool about the deck. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And because they can also be towers. So if you're sitting on a towers, Charles, that's it's really hard to interact with sometimes. So there's also that. Yeah, we control the tempo. We can interact with them whenever we see fit. Um, okay. So that's like the, mm -hmm. the battling boxer engine. Yep. Um, it's important to know with the Battling Boxer engine, there is more than you see here. It's like ju it's not just Connector, it's not just the 3 and the 1 Rota, it's the, s the 9 because of the, some of the cards you play, because you can search this because it is a Fire Warrior, which is incredibly relevant. Um, yeah. Onto the Infernobles, it's 1 Renaud, 1 Turpin, 1 Richard, 1 o Oliver, 1 Ogier, 1 Malgus. I think we've all gotten really accustomed to seeing this, and then 1 uh, Gear Freed for the Honorary Knight. Because he'll stick with them as long as he can. Yeah, um, uh, I think there's no uh, much more to explain about Inferno because people in my channel should know what these cards do. If they don't, like, that's yeah. you people. <laughs> you should know it by now. Yeah, yeah. Um, the can only you, thing you... that people probably still might not agree with is um, you, you play one of all these cards, and it's also a good thing you're playing one. Not only do you have, like, three copies of Museum, that many Durandals and etc. is you're never drawing two of these. Your deck has a much lower chance to brick on unplayable hands because you're not playing two of any of these cards. Um, and that's like a small thing, um, but people, people talk a lot about how I drew two Ash Blossom or I don't want to play this card because I might draw two of it if I play three. Um, that, that that never happens with this, this okay. ratio. Yeah, yeah. And since these are all extenders and all situation cards, um, that's completely fine. And then if you draw these outside of, you know... Durandal or whatever, these are great to draw because they're just extenders. Um, it, Richard's great to draw going second because it's just an extender. Um, so the one of ratio is very clean. It feels very good to play. Um, if you haven't tried it, I, I really, really suggest giving it a go, especially with the Malgus because this is going to alleviate any of the follow-up issues of having these back in your deck. Sure. Um, this is just a great ratio to have. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Um, I mean, I, the I one thing I can't suggest... Oh, just the one thing right before is I can't suggest if you really are like, if your local is still on Droll and Lockbird, um, you can play extra copies of Renaud if you'd like to, because opening it with um, Uppercutter is very strong for playing around that. But other than that, there's no other Infernoble you'd want to play it more than one. Yeah, yeah I can see that happening. Uh, they are all utility at the end of the day. I've been playing, I like in the mm -hmm. one of approach a lot in a lot of variants. Um, in this one, I completely agree. You should just play one ups. There is no reason to to play it more than more than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So now... because Spar is carrying so much of that weight, yeah, Spar yeah. is carrying so much of the weight of providing bodies that you just these are just great for uh, situational approaches to your to your combo boards. So and it's not only Rota, it's also like the one for ones in the simple. Like yeah, that even mm -hmm. and the Rota. foolish burials off of the Angelica, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I play three copies of Fenrir. Um, so in the list I played, I played three copies of Fenrir. Um, it is very important for this deck. Um, I'm going to put the Simple Spoils cards with this as well. To have a lot of bodies that you can just put onto the board um, to where you can equip two going first and then search off the Uppercutter because that does so much for your um, for your consistency because playing the seven copies or this is eight copies of cards that can special summon themselves um, you're getting an extra, it's like 38% chance with all of these eight plus the eight, the eight copies of museum Durendal, um, of seeing uppercut in your opening hand. Mm -hmm. And that is a significant jump from our strongest normal summon, which was connector or, um, it's even a jump from a card like Wakaoshi if you're playing super heavy or any of those cards, because, uh, not only are you putting an extender on the board before you commit to your combo, which can also eat an interaction like with black, Witch. um, 
you can sequence your plays and then activate museum after and then still have your one card combo to go through with the extension and the knowledge that their hand traps are out which is a big thing for the deck and it's a big thing at playing through interruption is how you sequence with cards like this um that's true and to be Fenrir honest is a... if, we, if we want to get super specific i think we have even more than 38 percent. i don't know if it happened to you the chance of getting the road into an oliver summon the oliver and then he could also special summon i mean the oliver and then you could also roll it into yes the, yeah the upper card. yep it is higher um i'm just counting two cards um yeah, so all yeah, of yeah. all of her plus any of these and then the turpin or um any way to just put a special summon body up board it's higher than the it's higher than the 38 37 percent but like just for the two the blind two card which is like museum durandal all mace joy um heritage plus a special summon that is an extra 38 percent chance to draw upper cutter so th every more than every three and four games you should be seeing upper cutter which is it, it, that's just amazing um you're winning almost all of those games <laughs> Um, um, if somebody asks you, uh, why no Rice Heart? Um, I don't like Rice Heart anymore. It's, like, fine if you, like, so Rice Heart's really good if you draw with, like, if you draw Fenrir with Black Witch, um, then you could like, make the Angelica, yeah. then, like, get to, like, a, like, an Infernoble half board. but I don't find that being worth the percent of drawing the Rice Heart as a brick, because... It is Rise Heart is basically like playing the Beckon since I'm playing the Ape Engine. Rise Heart is this. Um it that. just doesn't do anything. Yeah, it, it's it's slightly more playable, but it's just this. Um and without a sold, that is not good in the deck anymore. You need more of your cards to be live, and I feel like just playing the Fenrir for the fact that it's it mitigates your battle phase weakness by being able to be a very, very threatening body to battle with. Um it you can special summon it to um be able to equip to add uh, Uppercutter, and as well as it's a great defensive card, especially into Rogue. If you're playing this card and you're playing against most of the Rogue decks, quote-unquote, which is like everything that was meta before, exactly. you know, <laughs> Phantom Nightmare got released, um, this card's insanely good. You're winning most of those games, you're dropping this, and you're trading with like three to four cards, um, and then you can use your Infernoble Engine. It's a very, very good card. Um, I, I would almost always play this in the deck modern because of just be, just because of the fact that I'm searching uppercutter if I'm playing uppercutter as my starter it's just that good um, if you can't get your hands on Fenrir's um, the same thing applies to cards like um, Fire Flint Lady is still viable because you can normal summon it and then tribute it to special summon the uppercutter um, just ways to equip to something to search your uppercutter um, it's very very viable in a build like this because that is your that is your best card mm, yeah yeah. I agree with that. Also, if you uh, if somebody's playing the rice card, keep in mind that him making Angelica is not enough. You also need a way to trigger Angelica, and he's not like one of the infernal level mm -hmm. four guys with a graveyard effect. So keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah. You'd have to use your equip at that point, and then you're ending on a Charles, maybe maybe a second one if you're getting decently lucky. So that's not, um, in my opinion, that's not worth the eleven percent chance to draw the rice heart. So. Uh, you saw these a little bit earlier, but uh, the, still the um, still the I played five copies of which now I used to play one. Um, I upped it one more because I wanted the extra body, the special summon, and not three because it becomes a bit redundant because we play in the extra deck and flame banshee to search popular. Oh, okay. So, um, yeah, if you open both, it, it feels kind of bad because if you open because there are lines where you like you want pop you want to go through popular to put a card in the spell trap or you want to go through this. Um, for certain anti nib lines, which were like just found like that Monday of uh, this Monday, <laughs> yeah. um, yeah, so, um, you can play the third and be completely fine. Um, you can cut like a friend room for the third, and I think it's completely fine. It's just a personal thing, I don't like opening a lot of redundant cards. I think, um, if you expect that, yeah, and a hand trap which anytime it's likely that you could play three, but if you are seeing that, oh, we're yeah. going through decently enough, yeah, then play less, yeah. Yeah, I think it's more of a feel thing. The third, of course, you're being a little more consistent, and you can see the uppercut a little bit more often. Um, but again, I like personally the way I like drawing because I don't like as many um, uh, dead cards. The because uh, yeah. like drawing wanted and witch feels like kind of bad going second, especially if they like get rid of your witch and you have like nothing else to do. But that's again, you're getting into like those bad mentality of like this happened to me once or twice, so it's like a bad thing for the card. It's not a bad thing for the card. It's just. It's just how I play the deck. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree, I agree. Also, 
uh, if we actually cut the fender for a week, which is not going uh, much more consistency. So I, I, I see I see why you yeah. like to. Yeah, it makes it makes more. Yeah, sense yeah. Now. And then obviously the uh, the original simple spool is just like good to draw by itself. It's fantastic extender. It's oh. it cards really 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 good. It ever happened to you like? using the simple to get the Ricardero, not reviving anything, and later on vanish to space some on the upper cutter? Yes, yes. Um, cool. It happened mostly going second, actually. Hmm, um, I played into a board versus... Yes, I played into a board versus Pearly. Um, he had, like, the Noir. He had Ash, Imperm, Nib. And then I go into a situation where I make Angelica. I use uh, an Infernoble to equip to Angelica. Yeah. Um, and he chained Nib to me. Um, and so I said, that's fine. Activate the museum, museum search upper cutter, normal summon it, add this. Um, and then I full comboed, uh, because I banished with Richard, special summon, made them see, um, that's where Ib engine came up going second, actually, to where I was able to make SP Baron through the two Noir, Ash, Imperm, Nib, and then out his board. And then, you know, it was, it was really, really good. Yeah. Yeah. It was one of those hands where you just look at it. And if you, if you, if you play it correctly, you just feel unstoppable. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. Later on, uh, I, I gotta ask you what what was the the hardest board that you broke and actually won. Uh, I, I have a feeling it might have been that that purely board, or do you have something even harder? Yeah, that? it was either that one or I played through full like full full snake board, um, but I only like I literally only couldn't do it because I drew Malgus instead of any other normal card. If it was literally any other Fire Warrior that I drew, it was just had to be Malgus. I would have been a little bit more alive. Um, but I played through the full Fire Board. I, I was like, oh man, I normaled Malgus and then um, he had a, a hand trap when I made when I made the sec and the Angelica yeah. after I played through everything and he just hand trapped the second effect. I was just like, oh, <laughs> so close. Yeah, yeah. But uh, the deck could play through a lot. I still feel like an achievement when I lose, uh, but after like breaking like five six interruptions with a bad hand, like when you do like the best yeah, it was possible. Um, yeah, yeah, and that, that's also the thing. It's like if you're playing through that efficiently and you're playing all of those and getting through all that kind of like board interruptions, and then like they had two hand traps. Well, I mean, that's just going second in Yu-Gi-Oh. There's there's not much more you could have done. Eight interruptions going second, something like that. That's at a certain point, you got to think, like, it's not the deck, it's not me, it's like, it's like he just played it well, he timed his hand traps. Yeah, exactly. So, um, happens a lot. For the next engine I played, it is the Ib engine, the Succession, and the Beckoned. Um, mm -hmm. This was actually very important for going first. The fact that this extends through a lot of hand traps, it guarantees you... Um, bodies on board through itself getting interacted with and it gives you a card like succession which is actually very interesting because this is just basically um choose anything in your graveyard and it comes back which can be a like little knight um if you want to link up yeah it basically it's ddr and phoenix blade yeah um this is probably the same playability if if not a little bit worse than phoenix blade but this is a lot more playable than ddr which feels really nice um since if you draw this itself it, it's it's really good. You don't. It's like, um, you don't. You're not reliant on getting through your combo for this to be good, which is very nice. Um, I guess when you. Open but this gives you a lot of. Mm -hmm. Oh no! Go ahead. I I guess when you open one of those, uh, you could like change your route to not make the the Eve because you already got the car. Yeah. Um. The nice thing about Ib is so if you open this, you don't have to go through her because you just have one of the better cards that she searches. Um. And then you can play around stuff like Nib with this in your hand already, so it's not that matter. But if you open back and um, if you can like make Dempsey with this and then do the combo anyways, or if you open Black Witch and any way to discard it, um, Ib summons from the graveyard, so oh, cool, yeah. it doesn't really matter at that point. It's not a yeah, it's not a it's not a real Garnet. I mean, it being a level four warrior means you can equip to it, you can do all that kind of stuff like from your graveyard monster effects. So it's actually just in essence, it's like. It's not good by any 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 stretch, but it's manageable. So hmm. that that's nice to see with with, with a card like this. It's manageable. Reminds it's not good, me, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I get it. It reminds me a lot of when I was playing the black Gar black rose maiden engine, 
I don't remember which variant it was. Yeah. Maybe when we had Halki but no Auro, yeah, at some point I was with the Garden Rose, and when I hard opened the Black Garden, it was like the Beckon, because you could use it and then get, get it from the graveyard. Yeah. And th this, this comes in a little bit into like how I theorize how I'm playing a deck where you are playing the uh, s the s less optimal draw for a card that you can access every game. And it's why I pref I don't prefer the decks like the, the Super Heavy Engine or um, the Snake Eye Engine or the Adventure Engine is because yeah. you're playing those bricks in your deck reliant on a card that you have to draw. Uh, you don't have to draw. You don't have to draw Ib to get access to these. You just have access to these uh, whenever you can make Ib. Um, yeah, and so I believe that is why I find these are more acceptable um, because it's basically like you're just replacing the Assault and Bricks with these, and you're basically playing the same consistency deck. Um, but that's just typically my theory. Is like anytime I can, I can access Ib at any time. So the the chances of me drawing uh, this one in particular is not also taking away from the chance of me drawing the card off from my deck and then i just have two deck cards um which is very very nice yeah i see the similarities with this and the ddr um uh, phoenix blade even more than just uh, mm. looking like similar in the terms of garnet also with the with how they yeah um how they behave with your engine because i see that this engine allows you to to play to more hand drop to do stuff before angelica and that's what we were doing with salt stuff mm. before angelica yeah, that was the goal. The goal was to find something to either get so far into a different combo line that they don't know what I'm doing and they're throwing hand traps, or get into a point where I'm making interruptions before Angelica, or to a point where if they stop Angelica at that point, it doesn't matter because I can still lend them four interruptions. Um, and that's what this engine accomplishes. It gives the deck an incredibly high ceiling uh, with minimal, like very, very minimal um, downside being these two cards not being the most optimal draw. I mean, it's just Monster Reborn, it's fine. Um, but it, it does give that power ceiling and does give that feeling of, I'm just going to combo through everything when I can access the Ib. Because once you access the Ib, the, the game's probably over. You're probably winning. But would you say that this, uh, it may achieve like the same amount of power uh, or gas, but I think it's a little bit more complex than when we had Isol. I think with Isol it was straightforward, cause this, summon this, with this, I think you you have more range of free style. Do you feel it like that? Yes. Yeah, Absolutely. There is a lot a lot more you can do. There are times where you I'll go, I'm going Angelica first. I'm going to search my museum. I'm going to make it with my Angelica. I'm going to synchro them off into a bear and summon the Beck and make Beck into a Link Spider. Bring back the Angelica. Target. And there's so much you can do outside yeah, of just the normal Link climbs. Here. Yeah, there's there's too much to start talking about because I'll just go off into a tangent. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot you can do. It's definitely a lot more freeing than just like a sold up, um, send the quips. If not, make you know summon Richard, go through Angelica, um, and then it makes your choke points a, a lot more blurry. So it's it's a lot harder to play when you're the opponent. Um, I think it's not even like and that's a big thing. It it is like the choke point changes from hand to hand. Like it's not like oh even if, yeah. you, if you are playing against you like. You may think, oh, I'm going to stop him here, but depending what extent that you have, you could, like, change. Uh, yeah, I think that the yeah. point is not like, oh, it's one, but we have to hide it. It's different depending on the on the line that you take. Yeah, and, and it gets to the point where it is just better to just throw a hand trap at uppercutter and then hope I can extend. And again, with the perfect segue, with the amount of extenders that perfectly extend your combo... Um, that is not a good idea. <laughs> um, and it, it gets to that point where it, it's like connector where you have to hand trap the connector, but there's so many ways to extend past it that it should just feels so bad. Um, mm -hmm. and that's basically where we are too. I'll put joy with these and honorary, but you are playing. Are huge. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If you don't hand trap, uh, and I get too far into my combo, uh, it's really bad. And then if you do early and I open, you know, the nine plus the witch plus post side tactics um it's really really bad and that this is why i believe the deck is extremely is extreme it's still extremely strong um is because you are playing so many consistency pieces that are also double as extenders heritage is a starter and an extender yeah. museum is a starter and an extender um Durendal, 
Uh, same thing with all mace. Uh, Rota as a starter and an extender. You're playing up to nine copies of those. Um, you can check through Droll with these. You can grab whatever you need. Um, playing Joyous in the deck means Museum has multiple modes rather than just being a Drendel searcher. So if you need to salvage a card like a Gear Freed, you can. Um, it's just very, very nice. I feel like the having the Joy in the deck, which I didn't believe in Joy before, uh, but I know I, that's like one spot where we um, we conflicted. But um, having the Joy in the deck now, it just feels so much better. I think that's funny. I, I think when yeah when I had uh, in one of my variants, I was against uh, Amaze. Then I was like um, Amaze Believer. Now I'm a little bit like half half. It's, it's funny the, the sorry Amaze no uh, the Joy. Yeah, Joy is a is a card to to analyze. Yeah, yeah. But I do agree that it yeah. always has some pros for the deck. Mm hmm. Yeah. Um, Museum is a fantastic card as well. Um, if you didn't know, Poplar, uh, the flam if your opponent's flamberging you, any of those effects where they're putting, like, uh, the symbol spoils of diversion, the spell card, they're putting cards in your spell trap, and the museum does not specify equip cards. It just says one of your noble knights in the spell trap zone. So, cards like Poplar, putting something from your graveyard, uh, your back row, something like Pack a Bit, the new synchro monster, putting something in your back row, any noble card, um, you can still summon that with museum. So museum is just extra good because it has these hidden consist these hidden uh, synergies with the engine that are very very strong. Because if you like, there was a combo line I went through where my opponent uh, nibiru'd me. I had a OSS and they an equip card. They nibiru'd me on um, Charles effect uh, to uh, roll effect to equip to Charles. Yeah. I said that's fine. I made a link spider. I equipped a card to it. I sent it for um, sent the equip card for OSS. I summoned Poplar. I uh, linked those two with the Hita, and the Poplar effect put the Charles in the spell trap, and then I was able to use the museum to move up Charles from the spell trap. <laughs> um, Just like that. And then not be, and not be locked because I still controlled Charles, so then I can make Princess and go through all that stuff. Um, little things like that are how you optimize your play lines and then really push through hand traps at that point, or into boards going second. That's how you really, really, really do it, is by getting those minor, very, very minor... Um, uh, synergies and yeah. really maximizing the potency. Yes, yes. I, I like that absolutely. all of those, uh, except Rora, they have like more things that, that they could do. Like the heritage being mm -hmm. a super, super weird recover effect that sometimes when it happens, you feel amazing. I, I don't know if you ever saw that. Like, I only did it a few times in my life, but it feels amazing when you do that little effect. I've never resolved it. <laughs> Or when you have like the museum. Very rarely are they ready over Charles. Yeah, yeah. Or when you have the museum that you already used every effect, and then before you make the Angelica to get a new copy, you could always say code the museum because they just sitting there completely free. Um, yeah, and under mm -hmm. roll, a lot of those have the like, graveyard effects. Yeah, I, I also like a lot these type of rollers that do more than just search. Exactly. Um, you, especially like heritage being so flexible, being terraforming, uh, salvage or a search, you can like if you're playing against uh, game two and three, you and you're like you open like heritage black witch plus a, like an equip card or something, you can like think to yourself and like play to make that risk of do I heritage Rogier and play under droll, or do I risk it in heritage for museum? Um, and that's what's super nice and that's what differentiates a very very good player from somebody who. Uh, might be a little less proficient with the deck is the fact that you can make those very, very small micro decisions with a card as powerful as Heritage, or even hold it to add a card back from Graveyard that you can foolish burial. Yeah, yeah. Hold there, there's a lot with this, with like, this line of cards. When you make Angelic against Ash and then Heritage replace that, yeah. Yeah, it's cool. I like the progress. Um, that's all the spells. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very good. Um, I mean, that, yep. we had it, that we had to see. Or is there any other one? Nope. Um, all these, all the spells for the engine. It's all you really need to run. Um, you don't. Luckily, we don't need any more equip spells because of a sold. So no, no really bad draws, um, which is nice. But the, these cards are just very, very good. I, the fact that you have basically ten copies of the same card, and they all get to different cards is just so good. <laughs> um, onto the hand traps. I think this is, of course, the uh, format for hand traps. Um, this deck can afford to play it with a small up with a small like increase in deck space since I do play 45 cards. Um 
So some people might be not be a fan of, but I did the math and it's all it all works out fine, especially for me. Um, but twelve hand traps is very very strong. Um, you're beating down the rogue decks with twelve hand traps, and then stay, it gives you the best fighting chance for Snake Eye Fire King and the pure Snake Eye deck because these landing on Ash can just end their turn. Um, but these are the, these are the twelve that I found just the best, and they worked out pretty well. Um, not much more to say. You could play other non engine if you'd want, but this is just what I preferred to play. Um, I would advise people that every time that somebody goes over 40, I think it's correct that you say that you gotta run the map. I don't like when people are like throwing cards mm. and they don't ever op open the hypergeometric calculator. I think that's a must when you go over 40. Yeah. To make, make sure that while you yep. were trying to accomplish it 40, you can still accomplish it over 40. Exactly. Uh, and that's actually why I made sure to do the math. Uh, the 75-ish the percent chance to open upper cutter is at my deck count. It's not at 40. Um, the chance of seeing two defensive cards being 60% is at my deck count, yeah. not at 40. So it's always important that you make sure you tune your deck to your deck count and that if you want to add cards, you make sure you make adjustments and tweaks uh, to make sure those added cards aren't really hurting you too much, which is what I did to make sure that 45 let me fit in all this non-engine and hope in a format that is not reliant on playing this many non-engine. Maybe you can play less board breakers uh, you can play more, less copies of cards and play more board breakers because you don't need 12 hand traps plus a 3 fender. Um, you can just move the deck count down and be a little bit more consistent. So, um, just for this format, uh, this feels like a good deck count. So, you would agree that the best ratios for this variant are like the chance of getting your one card combo, your normal summon, uh, and the chance of opening mm -hmm. a hand trap for, because of the format? Yes. Um, for me, it's upper, yeah, I want to see uppercut as much as possible. That being north of 70% is very good. Um, of course, obviously, the combo chance, which for me was two fours or four one, um, which is at any, at any capacity, that's like in the high 90s. So um, that also matters. And then the two, the two hand traps, I believe, was um, going second uh, is 55 to 60%. I don't remember exactly off the top of my head. But with the Fenrir's, uh, if I put on a defensive card, um, it's definitely at around 60% to see two defensives at this deck count. So. I think that's decent. No. Okay. So, um, and again, it's one of those decks that if you pilot it correctly, you can make up for the loss of a small loss of not drawing a uh, defensive. Okay, uh, this playmat is the so, one that you got in, in the top eight. Yes, cool, cool. <laughs> this is this season's uh princess playmat. I, I really wanted this one, uh, which is why I was so bummed when a sold got banned because we knew this was going to be the playmat. <laughs> and I saw that band. I was like, "Oh my god, I'm gonna have to work my butt off now to try and like play <laughs> either play a different deck or or really work something out." But I'm glad I found something that that works. So yeah, beautiful play that. Yeah. yeah. Um, onto the extra. Okay. The, yeah, uh, the the yeah. Infernobles are the same. I was a big proponent of two Roland before, but with the loss of a soul and like the loss of like the deck space, or the extra deck. Um, I have to only play one, which is really sad because I, I really like the value of getting the second, the like, second roll enough to Angelica, but they just can't do it anymore. Did you miss but the interruption? The fact that this. Oh uh, no, no, no! It's just for follow up. Okay, okay. I just like having the follow up of you know Princess target Angelica target their card summon Roland plus the Princess okay. plus the Dempsey. That would be so nice, but um, of course, of course. it it's not it's not a huge gripe, but um. Angelica getting to both of these in, in like 90% of hands is so strong. Um, as long as you save this for when your opponent doesn't have any interaction, or if this is a good bait because your hand can make this hard, uh, and then you have museums already in hand, um, you're just playing through everything. Um, because this, like, as long as like you can get hand trapped four times, and if you have a way to make this, you're still putting up four interruptions, which is very, very nice. Um, <laughs> yeah. 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 But uh, I don't know what else to say about the, the Infernoble cards. They're, they're just as good as always. Charles is insane body. Gives you follow-up. Angelica returns every turn. Yeah, yeah, they should know what the, the Infernoble extra the cards do. And they should know that they don't, you know, yeah. they don't play Oliver here. <laughs> we just play these, these guys. Yeah, yeah. The only um, the only new interaction is, is how Angelica interacts with Princess. Um, Princess uh, needs to resolve as much as possible. So when you're making Princess and you go, Princess if I target Angelica and target their card, you can then chain Angelica um, to tag out in Foolish Burial. And since we play Uppercutter, 
we can use a secret effect and revive a battling boxer from the graveyard. So that can revive Dempsey, and then Dempsey can search a monster. So you're going to get two cards, and then they get this back at the end phase. So even if they full wipe you, like, they get rid of both your Charles, they get rid of your gear free, they run over your SP, you have three cards coming back, and you have follow-up, because the search is ran odd, that can add back gear free from the graveyard, which is very, very good. Um, so that that is a very, very important thing uh, to know, because that is a... You're going to win games you had no business winning because of that. <laughs> Did you ever get your full board broke and won in turn three because of the follow-up? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That happened last night at Locals. Oh, okay. I, uh, I ended up subpar hand, double Charles gear. I was fighting against Brandon. Um, he broke my full board with engine. Um, he could have killed me I had because I had a bestial in hand for non-engine. Uh, and Angelica plus Valgus every turn, I ended up winning that game. Nice, nice, nice. So... Yeah, very, very. It's very relevant, um, and especially in like when you get to the hand trap wars. If you get, keep getting hand trapped, that send, send uppercut or summon Dempsey every turn is going to avalanche your advantage, which is very, very good. Yeah. For the US viewers out, out there, don't forget that this interaction with princess and princess is amazing, but it doesn't work uh, quite the same with SP princess. So, like, if you want to like SP target the, the Angelica, because Angelica is also a princess. Um, she, uh, if she dodges, SP doesn't bind it. So keep that in mind. The, the Promethean is the best card to, to trigger Angelica in the, in the opponent's turn. Yes. It's because Promethean says banish, uh, destroy them, or it's this, uh, and then Prome uh, SP says banish both. Yeah. So you have to banish both to get SP banish, and Promethean just has to resolve as much as possible, which is destroy at least one of them. So that's why Promethean works, and then SP doesn't. Yeah. Don't forget we have to be lawyers to be good at Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yep, reading the fine print. Um, the next card is obviously the Ib. Uh, typically, this is what you go into because one upper cutter gets you to Dempsey, and then Dempsey gets you to Ib, and then you have both on board to link off, and then you can trigger this effect again. Uh, the fact that this adds you, um, it summons a level 4 warrior, and that it also adds you the monster reborn means you can be in many different situations to where I need to make a rank 4 here, I need to make a Psycho 9, which is power to braver. Or I need to like leave this in succession in graveyard, make a make Angelica, then make turn those into Baron. Um, there's a lot of different situations. Um, but this card basically gives you the gas to play through everything, and it gives you the flexibility and lines to really kind of show off the deck and show the deck at its best, which is very very nice. It's a very very fun card to play with, uh, which I really enjoy. <laughs> but um, it's also a tuner, so there are a lot of lines where you're not linking off. You're like normal summoning upper cutter. Adding spar, special summoning spar, and then summoning a level one tuner. You're making this, and then you're making power tool. Okay. Um, and then you're using that to play around nib. It plays around droll. You can use a lot of those lines to like use make like go off into Oliver protected Baron. Um, there's a lot of things that this card could do. It's just you really have to get into the lab and really work on your combos because it's it's a lot more than like the standard you link climb in the princess lines. Uh, which I really enjoy. It's it's what makes the deck playing playing the deck so much fun. Yeah, yeah, I see that here we have a lot of uh, decision tree, a lot of complexity in the fact of how are we using the mm -hmm. equip, and if we're getting to braver, or what are we equipping, what are we saving? So now maybe we can you can talk us uh, about the braver. Yeah. Um. So braver dragon is it? It was always a really good card, but it was always very unnecessary because if you can make a synchro nine, you can make Charles and make the emperor. Um. Now with the fact that it's very easy to make a Synchro 9 before you even make Angelica, yeah. um, and before your Warrior Lock, which is important, that this card becomes a lot more a lot more valuable because you can get value out of every single equip in your deck and then get um, even more value out of the museums by shuffling back, drawing a card. Um, this is very, very strong because there are times when you need this to get into your engine. Say you open like 7-1-1 or... Seven, you know, seven, seven, one. Be able to get out another card into this. Um, this gets you into your full engine because you can equip Durendal, you can equip Joy, you can summon a card out of your hand, you can search a card. It's just very, very strong. Um, it lets you play around Droll because every single equip has a graveyard effect. So if you like link link this off into a Little Knight or um, into whatever, um, like a Princess, and then you go bring back add a card back, add a card back, bring back a card. You aren't searching museum anyways because of Droll. Um, so might as well get the full advantage of all your cards. Yeah, when we get Droll, like, you can like, still get all the three equips. And that's good because it's, it sucks to make the Angelica, Roland, Charles 
under the roll without having access to equips because then when Dar Charles doesn't equip anything in end phase, I think we lose a lot of value. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, you lose you lose a Malgus value and you lose your grind a lot of the time. Um, another nice thing about this is another hidden interaction is you can actually like equip a dead equip to this and then negate your Promethean Princess to I climb into really. a two material Appaloosa. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's that is. It, it's super, super good. Um, especially because, like, if you use Durendal in your turn to extend, there's nothing else that Durendal can do. So you might as well equip it to Braver if you can, if you have like the extension and like you know your opponent's not going to hand trap you anymore and you just need to make a bigger board. Um, that is very, very good to do because it's just two extra interruptions for free. You can protect it um, with SP, you can protect it with Charles. Um, very, very good line. Yeah. And then it's the best way to step up into Baron. Because this triggers on special summon. Because it's of course a power tool, it's meant to work with like Zulkin and all those cards. Uh triggering on special summon means if you go Baron Effect to put itself in the extra deck and summon this back out, you don't lose the interruption from like negating a hand trap of Baron, which is very, very strong. I mean, I'm very very it's not only interruption, it's gonna be a lot of follow up. Mm-hmm. You get those three equips back, you're getting three more cards. Um very, very strong. He reminds me, uh, and... especially like. Um, oh, sorry, sorry, I, I, I forget it. We had this interaction when we first got the Dune support, where we were playing um, the Artorigus, and like in the grind game, he being able to equip the three equips was insane. When you had everything set, mm -hmm. so take advantage of the three equips. Now that there is no way with yeah. the Artorigus, like Bravery is doing the same if you actually pull that out. Yeah, Braver is doing the same from deck, which is why he's really good. Deck or, um, and, or graveyard. So, yeah, so he's grabbing them from anywhere. So you shuffle them back with Malgus, you use all of them again for your museum stuff. He's going to pull them back from your graveyard, you're going to use them again. Um, and he only needs one equip to get his negate, so you just negate a card with his, or change battle position, which is good for protecting Appaloosa, which is funny enough. Or again, changing Angelica's battle position to trigger Angelica if they try to, ch if they chain blocked, um, your Angelica with the Infernable Graveyard effect, which which comes up in freestyle lines. Um, very, very good multi-use card. Um, I don't think I need to explain Baron. It's just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's Fleur. Fleur. People are normal Sony hand drops to make Baron, so yeah. There is no need. Yep. Hap happens a good amount. Uh, one Dempsey for the Xyz. This is, I mean, we all know how good this card is from when we were making one card combos with like, uh, and we're not at back DDR. But it's more of a starter now. Um, again, if it gets hand trapped, it doesn't matter because it's a fire warrior. So you could just detach the spire, especially the Renad. Um, that is that again. I'm going to hammer that home. That is so important that all your starters are fire warriors to play around hand traps early in your combo. Um, yeah, and tr triggering on special summon is insanely good. Um, every turn you're adding a card with Dempsey. Every turn it's a 2800 card attacker which can attack into something. Um, it's a very very good card. And then um, the other Xyz is Infernal Flame Banshee. So uh, I'm not going to take credit for this, but um, a couple of uh, people in the Infernal Discord, I had the original line, which wasn't as good as what they came up with. But now this deck, because of this card, can play through, like, as long as you have a body and a way to make rank four, you just play through Nib because of this card, which is just, which is insane. Because of um, doing popular and stuff. Yeah, because of the interaction where you can make Little Knight and then banish this, um, and then it comes back, you now have four, and then Poplar puts a card for OSS. So as long as you can make this with an extra body, you're playing around it, uh, and then still getting into your full combo, which is uh, which is so good. Because I, at first I didn't know about the effect um, that I thought it had to be on field banish, but it's anywhere. So if this is banished, period, you can summon it back if you control Poplar or uh, a talented card. Um, which is very, very relevant. That makes this card infinitely better. Because I was just using it at at the event um, for anti-nib lines, but they were a little less good. But they were still pretty potent because I ended on Apple for four, Charles plus Ring. I think that's pretty potent. <laughs> um, but with this now, uh, with what we found, which is very nice, it's actually kind of good. It's good that we've done this, you know, with a little bit more so there's more information. Um, this card becomes so much better going first. It is a very, very strong card. Yeah, 
I like that it allows us to actually utilize SP going first for something better than just, oh, I'm going to vanish your hand drop just because, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's like the SP interaction is fine. It's like it's an okay interaction. But if you can, I would give up my SP and keep my Hita um, in the extra deck for the fact that I can be very, very safe. And if you're in that situation, because again, this is any monster plus this and then pop. Because yeah. you're making SP with this plus that other monster. Uh, if they chain Nib, which is the correct play when you have this on board because they don't want you to make Apple and just make the Nib useless. Yeah, yeah, you, you just tag these out. <laughs> and then you still keep the SP interruption, which is why it's so good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man, that's, that, that's it's very, good. very nice. Yeah, and, and that's also why you need... That's also why everyone needs to talk to people and make sure you find good testing partners because you can't do everything alone. This Yu-Gi-Oh! is not a, a single-player game. Even if we're playing a single-player deck, um, make sure you find good testing partners and, and run everything through with the people you trust because um, I've, had a, I've had good success because I've had great players around me. Um, and, that, and that's so important, especially for a deck like this. Looking to a channel like this, uh, John Franco is you know one of the best we have. And so it's it's great to be able to find somebody else to talk with, to be able to do stuff like that. Because again, I would have not have found that by myself, um, unless I like spend an extra hour reading my cards just to find something more I can do, right? Yeah, so yeah. when we get to somebody um, else that has the other different experience than you, yeah, of course that can help a lot. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, onto the links, we play Link Spider. Um, this card is actually very relevant because Beckend is a, a normal monster, so. There are funny lines where you get nibbed and you make Link Spider, especially some of the back ends, right? That, that's really funny. But um, in one of the big anti draw lines, which is Uppercutter plus um, Black Witch, oh, um, you actually um, you make Power to a Braver Dragon. You equip the Joyous plus All Mace. Yeah. And then you have Uppercut, you have back ends on field. So just this is a normal monster. You go Joyous Effect. I'm going to add back my Sparrow. And then beckon effects going to you're going to use all mates to equip Durendal to the beckoned, and then you're going to link one into Link Spider, triggering your Durendal in graveyard to bring back Richard, which is going to bring back Upper Carter. Then you're going to special summon Sparrow from your hand, because uh, then you have material for Charles, Link Charles, and then Little Knight, and then you get the Angel Ring post side. Um, so you're still ending up four interruptions with a two card combo through Droll. I think that's that's really good. Which is yeah, it's very good. And then obviously if you get nibbed, it's very, very powerful because you can like make an SP or you can just continue with like succession. Very, very relevant for succession, being able to like link it off and then succession back upper cutter, special summon sparrer, make the banshee go off. Um very, very relevant card. Um it's pretty much a staple at this point. Yeah, yeah. It's almost mandatory. For this variant. Yes, I think this card's almost almost mandatory. Yeah, I think it's simple decks, it's uh, some you make, you'd have to make a good argument to cut this in sinful decks, but yeah, in this like variant, this is like it's one of the most important cards. Yeah, yeah. And then Little Knight, it's obviously just very good. It's a war you can make. It's an extra interruption. It's good at breaking boards. It's just a very good card. I wish I could play more, but the deck deck's tight. Does it um, to, come Hita? Up to you uh, that you can make SP warrior lock. Yeah, a lot of times the um, yeah. what I just uh, the anti the anti draw line where um, you're sent you're sent, uh, linking off back end equipped with Durandal. Um, it, it, yeah, if, if SP wasn't in the deck, it's like you lose you're just sitting on a big Charles. But it, it's really relevant that you're getting extra interaction while Warrior locked, which is very nice. Um, Hida was the biggest space saving card in the entire deck. Um, when I was first mapping, yes, mapping when I was first mapping out all the combo lines. Um, I wasn't able to fit in like the Apo, the Link Spider, and all that stuff, um, because I just needed too many weird cards to do the combo. Until I just came to the realization that I could play Hita. Going first, I could discourage Ash Blossom. Going first, I could beat Ash Blossom because of Hita, and then um, I can cut these cards because like, I was playing IP. I was playing like uh, just random Link Twos. I was playing trying to testing out Gravity Controller mm, and all this okay. stuff, but. Yeah, yeah but I came to the realization that Hita in this format is a defensive card because going second, 
It's very, very good to climb through their boards, take their Snake Eyes Ash, um, add your Poplar, make uh, Appaloosa, do stuff like that because of Hita. But um, it also let me completely trim the fat of the bad Link 2s, put in a Link 2 that you can make every single game in almost any situation, and sure to trigger your Ib and do all that stuff. And then as well as that, is it is just generally very good because as well going second you can crash it to search your popular and then full combo if at worst you get stopped on everything else which is very nice yeah. um because the deck needed a way to link climb into princess efficiently um first, which is why i've actually yeah it could also come up she's being, she's a link three when you get that yeah mm -hmm. um which is why um the, the this is which is why this variant i had no interest in playing before um phantom nightmare um because i had this deck and this this idea for a very long time um since the ban list i think about like a week after the ban list hit i was already mapping out the like the prototype combos yeah, yeah, um but i wasn't going to touch it because princess was so important to how to play the deck um and popular. you don't make it every game yeah and popular um you don't make this every game you don't go through it every game but the the games you go through it, it is so instrumental that Ib is able to basically free climb into this. Um, because this is an interruption, it is also a reborn. It also is non-targeted reborn, so cards like DD Crow are really bad. Cards like you know, all that stuff are just bad. Um, this is able to like it just nets you so much advantage. There, there are lines where you like you use this to bring back a battling boxer, and you have Turpin and Graveyard, then you special summon a level one, then you makes uh, yeah there's so much to go through this card is very very good it's, it's your follow-up it's an interruption yeah it, it's just everything um very very strong card um i think it's like the, it's obviously the format for it and then uh one apollo apollo i think in this deck again you're playing a deck that can easily spam bodies and link climb up in the link four very easy before you commit anything um this is very good to discourage hand traps it cards like nib which are very popular um Obviously, it, Nib and Perm still exists. There are times you have to play around it, um, which you you can you can play around Nib uh, in Perm your Baron Nib. Um, it's actually very interesting that you can do that now. <laughs> yeah. But uh, this also this also serves very well as being a card that can like s just negate the small Snake Eye effects because they can't run over it till it's small, and then you can just pop the card and they're like, I'm going to go battle. I'm just going to pop that card anyway. So very very strong. Yeah, yeah, plus is mandatory here. I mean, because we have so much, so much link line, link climbing that she's a good monster to end on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like if you um if you open like Black Witch, and then like it gets stopped, um making doing normal stuff and making Gib, you can literally just go straight up into Appaloosa and then do your combo under the Apple, which is nice. That's why Fenrir is so good because it's still an extender. It's an extra body, and you're playing for the majority of the early parts of your combo. You're playing a link climb deck. It's important to get into higher links, so that's why it's important the card like Fenrir exists because they ash your upper cutter. You make Pita. You take the ash. You go into you know you go into Princess. Bring back the upper cutter. Find a way to get Sparrow, especially the Sparrow out. Uh, make Banshee. All that stuff. That's why those random extenders that you're equipping to those bodies are important. Yeah, yeah, uh, but at the end so, of the day, it looks super tight. Like, cutting one of those is, I, I don't know, it's a, it's a big uh, situation. It, it's a problem if, if you think about it. Like, yeah, I think it's braver than most cut yeah, that, but, but then it, he's not. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 funny because it's you're in this like this small dilemma of all these cards are really good, uh, but they're all the extra deck is very, very tight. And that is due to the Infernoble Engine being just uh, five cards to get your interruptions, which it's fine because he's like, this is the best extra deck engine in the game because you're getting crazy advantage. You're getting hard negates. You're getting monster destruction, everything, right? You're getting, you know, usually three bodies out of this, but it leads to, you have to find ways to make more space. But I think overall, I think it's fine. You're playing a decent amount of defensive cards, um, you're playing situational cards like Link Spider. You're playing cards like Promethean Princess, which also help work through boards. Um, Braver Dragon does come up going second, because um, you can just make this um, equip. Yeah, get you threaten you get advantage off your equips and you threaten their cards with Monster Negates. Uh, Baron is fine going second as well, especially if Angelica gets negated. Um, so, 
um, you're you're in a worse you're you would be in the same situation with a sold because you need to play this, you need to play a lot of these cards, and then you have to play the two a sold because um, you're these are only the real three things that change is these three because um, you'd be playing this in this format anyways. So yeah, um, you would have one. Yeah, you'd have one extra flex spot, which is this. Um, if you were playing a sold. So this could be a second SP, but you're not in comparison to what the deck would be. I don't think you're losing that much extra deck space, which is um, why I can cope with it. <laughs> For me, it would probably be like a Link Uribo. Uh, but yeah, at the same time, you probably don't miss it as much as, as those cards that you are already running. Yeah, um, I found that I, I've wanted to play Link Uribo in a card like that, but with Summon Limit being in the game, that card is actually catastrophic. Um, yeah. Because of the fact that you... Uh, it's the, I mean, I don't like Summon Limit in general, but uh, no. it's just really <laughs> bad. But yeah, there, um, there's a reason that like I'm thinking post-side siding an extra deck monster for going second because of siding patterns. I normally side out Ib, the Ib engine, because they're just suboptimal draws most of the time. Um, I'd rather draw uh, Hand Traps or Gas. Um, so there is a re reason to do that, and you can get away with it. Uh, one extra deck side is not that bad. Um, any more than that is you're you're losing your chances of actually beating decks. But um, onto my side deck before okay. I keep yapping for too long. Uh, I play three Phantasme. It's a um, very very strong card into the Snake deck, and for this deck, it's very strong because again, a lot of our game plan is early link climbs before we commit to our Angelica stuff, and this is one of the best ways to do that because. Not only are you putting back cards like Joyous, like like Durendal if you already drew Museum, which is a big one, or or cards like Malgus, which you don't want to side out because if you want to stun the game down to a grind game, and then Malgus wins that by itself. Yeah, um, this card also lets you discard a card to negate and destroy something, which all our card, a lot of our cards have good graveyard effects like Ogier, um, Turpin is good from the grave. You'd rather actually have it in grave because it's it's not clogging up your hand. Um, it's just a very, very strong card. Every time I've drawn this, I've really liked it. As well as I play um, three Bestials. Um, the, the Bestials as well work very well. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. The Bestials as well work very well. Just because you're putting a body on board. And then you're able to link climb into Hita and through that stuff to play through the, the Fire Dex boards, which is very nice. Um, small interaction is Magna, Magna Hut can search. Phantasme, oh, yeah. so you're getting two defensives out of your one Magna Hut. <laughs> and then Drew Swarm, uh, your reason I play Drew Swarm over like a Serenir or a, um, a Ball Drake or extra, like different name Vistules, is that Drew Swarm with OGR, um, you could make a Baron, you could send that card to the graveyard, and then you can yeah. still play. Because um, you go OGR effects, send Turpin, equip Turpin here, then sink her off in the Baron, and that's usually safe versus a lot of their interaction because it doesn't require a special summon, so it can't get princessed. And that, that feels like a really bad IP in the SP to stop, like, the random OG air effect. So, um... <laughs> it is, it is. It is weird. Uh, so, um, yeah, these cards work really well. Yeah, um, they're good into... Things. These are really good into voices. Yeah, when we get that synergy. Um, okay, what else, is, mm -hmm. what else do we have in the extra? Any other hand drop, or only those hand drops? Those those are the, like hand traps. Uh, I play two tactics and one called by. Tactics is situationally good going second. Um, it's like fine going second in a lot of decks, so it fills that spot. But it's also really really good really good going first in hand trap format. Um, so you, I normally side out side down on cards like Nib or Imperm. Um, I don't want to draw Nib because I don't want to wipe my own board, and then um, I don't want to draw Imperm because I can't draw it off Magus if I do like play through the board and then there. Um, so I put these in for going first because they're very very good going first cards. Yeah. Um, again, this is also like decent versus like random decks like uh, Branded, putting it in going second versus Branded, other stuff like that. It's just a very flexible card because you can stop the puppet, stop, you know, whatever they're doing. Um, but I typically wanted this card in going first because of the hand trap wars. And if you can play through a hand trap already and you have this, you're just blowing them out. You're just not, you're auto winning. Yeah, when we did look at the hand, they always go. <laughs> or, or draw two if you can already, uh, if you need need the gas, which is very nice, they yeah. threw two hand traps at you. No, um, this is interesting. Roll one ring. Yeah. So, 
being able to access this because you have so many foolishes or um um you can go Durendal, Durendal effects search this and then you use this to target angelica instead of using Durendal target angelica because then by game mechanic this has to go to the graveyard because it attempted to equip so you can use its effect in the end phase which is very very nice it gets you to the ring um i didn't know that uh, i watched a video by team cog and he showed that because I never really read this card. I had it because I wanted all the Infernoble cards, but I never really read it because I mean, it was never really that relevant. But that, it's really awesome that that works that way. It is it like a little bit better than Brother Manti in terms of card advantage because he can do that or upgrade the Synchro into Link Charles. Yeah, I like him a lot because of that. Yes. Also, uh, very, very important for grind games. Um, you shuffle him back with Malgus, you, shuffle, you, sum, you summon him back with Angelica, or you... Or you do the effect where you add him with Dempsey, and then you can like make your SP Little Knight twenty six hundred by going roll on effect to equip to it, and then using this roll on to equip to it as well. So um, very very niche small interactions, especially like Appaloosa. Or say you negate it twice with Appaloosa, they go cool. Uh, battle phase, attack it with my Snake Eye card to trade with it. You go cool. Damage step, roll ones, equip. This is gaining five hundred attack. Um, <laughs> extremely niche. Extremely niche, small things like that do come up. Yeah, the first time that I played the Little Roland, when we first got Infernobles, I was doing the um, High Key Fibers combo to end on like four interruptions, but it was Charles with this, mm -hmm. because my combo didn't make the, the Synchro, the synchro Charles, it was funny. So yeah, I, I actually know this guy because of the damage step interaction. Yeah, so um, niche interactions with the Roland himself. You could also summon this one off of Angelica if you don't want to summon the Synchro 5. Say you like want to like do more stuff in your combo, you could summon this and guarantee your follow-up. But um, it, it's mainly there to search this, and this just beats every board breaker. Any board breaker deck just loses to this the second you put it in your deck. Um, yeah. It's why you have such a good matchup into like, any deck that's not playing 30 hand traps, you pretty much auto-win going first, because they literally cannot break your board once this comes on the field, which is just, it feels great. Yeah. Anything else in the side deck? Yeah, yeah, I played to draw. Um, I wanted it in the deck for like the voiceless decks, the Manadium decks, the decks like those. But it, it severely underperformed. It's, I think it, uh, this happens every format with draw, where it's like this card's crazy. This format, wow, everyone's maining three, and then <laughs> this card's okay. It works versus some decks, and then you move it to the side, and then it's just like, yeah, this card is just not doing anything. I'm just discarding a card. Um, and it, it's felt that way. Um, so I'm gonna cut one. That, and play a third cosmic because I really like I really like cosmic recurrently. Um, it beats island. It beats the Flambridge IP line. And um, limit. Yeah, and summon limit, anti spell, all that stuff. You can play under anti spell a lot better yeah, because you don't actually good. commit spells. You don't commit spells unless you're like museum early um, to like bait interaction on that. But cosmic is just generally very very nice, very very good utility right now. Um, so this should be this for my next tournament, cool. and then. Um, Makes sense. I'm still debating on what to do with that last slot. Um, who knows? Maybe, Maybe know somebody knows, <laughs> but um, <laughs> we'll see. Or but uh, overall, that is a random one of, yeah. Maybe I post play Duster or something like that, right? Yeah. Or an extra tactics. Who knows? Um, okay. I think, uh, as Stuart was about to say, um, this is the, the end of the, of the video. I think we went really in depth just as I wanted to do it. Uh, in case people mm. uh, didn't know, uh, this is actually the second time that we are recording this because of some setup problems. Uh, but I think this time it was even better. I think the quality of the content that we discussed, uh, I liked it a lot. And I hope the viewers liked it, liked it as well. So that's uh, all for me. Anything, uh, any final words you want to say? Uh, no, if you guys are still watching by now, uh, thanks for listening to me talk. Um, I really enjoy playing this deck, and you can you can find me on Facebook in the Infernoble, uh, the Noble Knight Discord group. Um, shoot me a message. My name is Rudy. Uh, if you ever want to talk about the deck or you have questions, especially about how the some of the lines go, I might not share like all the lines I know because uh, sometimes you just gotta find those. But I'm more than willing to help. Yeah, thank you for having me on. Um, if you guys didn't know, I also got coaching from John uh, before a couple of my regionals because. This makes my third regional in a row topping with Infernoble that I've attended. So um, if you really do want to like learn the deck, definitely book. Um, 
I'm not a, I'm not ashamed too. A lot of other good players aren't ashamed too. This man knows a lot about what he's doing. He knows a lot, especially about the variants he's playing. Um, don't be afraid to. You're going to become a much better player at Yu-Gi-Oh in general after it. So um, thank you for having me on again. It was wonderful. Okay, man. Um, that's it. Goodbye, people.